All right, peace and blessings, guys. Peace and blessings, Mark the Messenger. We're back with another video. This one's going to be about signs and how to know that saying the devil is attacking you. Okay, we, we battle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And also at the end, I'm going to tell you guys how to fight back, how to combat. Because every single day, or not, not maybe not every single day, but in our walk with Christ on the narrow path, you're going to get times where you get attacked. There's going to be times, and this is how the devil works before I go with number one, okay? How he works is if he can't get you in the physical realm, let's say if you're not opening any doors and you're being obedient, and he's going to try to mess with you in your dreams, you know, plant seeds in your mind. That's how he works, okay? We're not ignorant of Satan's devices. No, always understand that. The Bible says, submit yourself to the to God, resist the devil, and he will flee, you, flee from you. But as you're resisting from him, he's going to try to attack. He's going to try to sneak his way in. So always understand that. Just, you know, be wise as a serpent and be harmless as a dove. Let's get, let's go. Number one is questioning your faith and your belief in God. Okay. Uh, this is stuff that happened now. This doesn't happen no more because my strength is firm in Christ. Like I'm fired up, you know, but in the beginning stages, like whenever you get questioned, you know, you're questioning your faith, you know, is God real? Um, am I really meant to be on this path? You know, a lot of people, they, they entertain those thoughts. And the Bible says that God is not the author of confusion. So when you're, when you're, you know, battling that confusion, guys, that's that's not God. That's saying that's the devil attacking you. The devil wants you to give up. The devil wants you to, you know, um, not to fight the good fight of faith. You know, he doesn't want you to put the armor on. He wants you to serve and submit to him. Okay, so whenever you start to question your faith, is this worth it? Um, I don't know. Maybe the narrow path is not for me. All my friends, they, you know, all my friends and family and those who are the world, uh, they don't want to be my friend no more. So should I should I do this? But Jesus says, okay, remember, you, when you when you when you when you entertain those confusion thoughts, we got to fight back with the word of God. Jesus says that if you love my father and, and brother more than me, you're not worthy of me. Okay, your children, your wife, all that. If you're not so, people who can't give up their friends, they're not worthy to be in the narrow path. And that's why Jesus says only few find the path. Only few people are willing to forsake the things of this world to follow him. So always understand that if you're not ready to do that, okay, it's, it's a choice. It's a, free, it's a free will choice. Everyone has a free will to, you know, choose a side who they may go to serve. Choose whom you may serve. So always understand that whenever you get your faith is questioning your belief in God, you know, is, is being righteous worth it? Is being on this path that God placed me on worth it? That is not a God. So always understand and acknowledge those are demonic attacks. And we must have the helmet of salvation, okay? Which is um, another, you know, way we fight against spiritual warfare. The helmet of salvation. So we won't be entertaining these demonic strongholds. We'll cast down demonic strongholds with prayer. We'll cast down all these negative thoughts, okay, that are not coming from God. Number two is when you give up a sin that, it, that was keeping you in bondage, okay? Whenever you give up a sin that was keeping you in bondage, and you go back to it, okay? And let's say if you're trying to, you know, you're trying to forsake that sin, you know, you repent, you know, God, the Bible says that he who confesses his sins and forsakes them shall obtain mercy, okay? So when you give up those sins, yes, God will give you mercy, but you open up a door and, you know, now Satan's going to mess with you again because he just, he has nothing better to do. The devil has nothing better to do, okay? Just try to, just, to steal, kill, and destroy, to steal your joy, to kill your peace, and to destroy you, to send you to the lake of fire, because that's where he's going. Okay, so when you give up a sin that was keeping you in bondage, you know, for like years and stuff like that, and then you go back to it, and as you're trying to get that up, Satan's going to attack. You got to expect that. You got to expect you getting attacked, whether he's going to work through people, okay, or maybe, you know, people are going to try to tempt you. Let's say if it's like, you know, whatever the case may be, let's say like, like for, I speak on my experiences in my life. So for me, the hardest thing for me to give up was weed. So like, let's say if I gave that up, right? And then people would come to me like trying to like, offer me it for, like or should I give me free weed like stuff like that like those are all attacks okay he's trying to get you to go back so you got to expect that guy spiritual warfare now even if you're not trying to give up this and spiritual warfare is always happening but especially when you're trying to fully su submit yourself through to God to do the will of God he's gonna attack so just expect that number three is sexual dreams okay um and oh and in your dreams not just sexual dreams but let's say if you're dying or if you're attacking your dreams, or if you're tempted in your dreams, okay? Um, now, not all the dreams come from God, okay? If it's dreams where you're, you're tempted, or if you're sinning, or if you're having sexual dreams, those are demonic attacks. That's the devil attacking you, okay? Those are not good, the dreams of God. And always understand that when when you die in your dreams, or like, let's say if someone shoots you, or, you know, stuff like that, right? I had a brother who hit me up on the DM, he told me, or actually it was a constellation call back in the days, and he told me he had a dream where he died, and a couple weeks later, a couple weeks, a couple months later, he was in a coma. So you see how that works? Everything that happens in the spirit, in the spiritual realm will then manifest itself in the physical realm. 
Okay, let me repeat that. Everything that happens in the spiritual realm in your dreams will then manifest itself in the physical realm. So just be prepared for that. And, and see, sometimes, guys, that could be a warning from God. When you die in your, in your dreams, someone sh shoots you, you get ran over by a car, stuff like that, guys. That is a sign from God. Maybe there's a sin that you're committing that's going to lead you to death. The wages of sin is death. Maybe there's a certain lifestyle that you're living, which is, you know, the complete opposite of God. So God can warn you through those dreams. Okay, now the Bible says that no weapon formed against thee shall prosper. Okay, there was times, guys, when I had dreams and I was sleeping next to the enemy, being around people I shouldn't be around. Okay, uh, and, um, you know, there was times where people tried to kill me in my dreams. They failed. Okay, there was a gun. Someone put a gun to my head and he clicked on it 10 times. There's no bullets in it. No weapon formed shall prosper. But you see, I opened that door through being in being with someone i shouldn't be with okay so best believe you guys maybe you're in a relationship with a female or, or a guy that you shouldn't be around with and you gain these dreams okay that's god letting you know you're not supposed to be with that person god will warn us over and over again we just don't like to listen we don't like to listen and because you don't like to listen you're gonna pay the price just like if you don't listen to your dad or your mom and they're warning you whatever the case might be then you got you you're gonna get spanked <laughs> You're going to get beat up. That's how God works too, okay? God will punish you. He will let your enemies, you know, overtake you. And if you get tempted in your dreams before I go to move forward, that's also not of God. The Bible says that God doesn't tempt us. He doesn't lead us to temptation. So when in your dreams you feel tempted to sin or do wrong, that is a demonic attack. So acknowledge all those things, guys, and understand that's not of God. Okay, remember, God is not the author of confusion. Number four is extreme frustration, confusion, confusion. Uh, and confusion about your purpose, sorry, yeah, confusion about your purpose, lack of peace, and a strong urge to quit your assignment. Okay, God has assigned me to preach the word, to um, do many things for the kingdom of God. And there was times where I felt like quitting, like giving up, throwing in the towel. And because Satan was attacking me, okay, using weak vessels, using people who I love the most to get me to quit. And I was getting ready to throw the towel in. That's the attack of the devil. When God puts you in an assignment, you must fulfill it. Okay, you must fulfill it. And if you don't fulfill it, if you don't do what God called you to do, your life is going to be empty. You're going to feel empty until you do that purpose in your life. So always understand that, you know, whenever you feel like that, you have an urge to quit whatever God called you to do, that's an attack on the devil. That's not God attacking you. That's the devil. Okay, you have a lack of peace. Now, you can't have a lack of peace because you're disobedient. Because he who sows to his flesh shall reap corruption. That's in Galatians chapter 6, verse 8. Yeah, he sows to his flesh shall reap corruption, but he sows to the spirit shall reap life everlasting. So always understand that whenever you have a uh, lack of peace and you're doing the right thing, you know, like that's the, that could be a form of a demonic attack, a Satan attacking you. Okay, you have a confusion about your purpose. No Christian, anyone who calls himself a Christian, or if you call yourself a Hebrew Israelite, right? You should never have any confusion on your purpose because every Christian, every believer in Christ, your purpose is to do the will of God. Okay. We're just doing the will of God. What did Jesus tell the man? He says, if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. So everyone has a purpose in life. And that's to do the will of God. I have the faith in Jesus Christ and keep the commandments of God. Okay. That's your purpose. So no one can say, you know, I don't know what my purpose is. If you open the Bible, the Bible teaches you purpose. Okay? Do the, keep the commandments. Walk in the spirit. Don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. And, you know, remember, once again, have faith in God. Have faith in Jesus Christ. Okay. Number five is temptations to go back to your old bondage whenever god delivers you from a sin that was keeping you in bondage okay and you go back to it you gotta understand that those temptations that to made you go back to it that was not the most high that was not the most high okay whether it was a demon or a demonic stronghold or satan himself because even satan tempted jesus even the, even the devil tempted jesus so he's gonna tempt you and the Bible says, it's blessed is a man who endures temptations, for he shall receive the crown of life to him who promised. I'll leave a verse right here. I don't want to say that verse wrong, but it blesses the man he who endures temptation. So whenever the, the devil, he's going to tempt you. You know, he's going to tempt you with, you know, uh, whatever your weakness is. That's like, cause remember, the, the devil, he studies you. He knows everything about you. He studies you, guys. He knows your weaknesses. He knows what's going to get you to fall short. He knows what's going to get you to, you know, stumble. Whatever the case may be. So once you understand that Satan studies you and he knows your weaknesses, that means your weaknesses, you must try to like be, be, be strong, okay? Ask God to give you strength in whatever weakness you have. And he will give it to you. The God that always gives, equips his children with tools to, you know, to do the will of God, to fight the good fight of faith. So always understand that temptations, guys. You know, people ask me, you know, about Mark, Mark that or about the temptations. That's not God. God, the Bible says that God doesn't lead us to temptations. So, yeah. Number six is feelings of overwhelming 
Dispair, Darkness, and Fear. Okay. Uh, whenever you get these type, I remember in the beginning stages, guys, the devil attacks you guys with fear, despair, over, you're feeling overwhelmed, um, you know, and you feel like you're in darkness. You feel like you're in darkness. Now, sometimes we could be in darkness because we have no love for our brother or our sister or our neighbor. Okay. The Bible says that he who says he's in the light and hate his, hate his brother is in darkness even until now. Okay. So always understand that whenever you, you don't hate your brother, right? And you're abiding in the light and you feel that you feel that fear you feel that despair you feel that overwhelming uh these are all attacks acknowledge that guys always acknowledge it and don't give up don't grow weary and well-doing for in due season you shall reap if you faint not okay it's better to do the will of god than to do the will of what man has for you okay always do what god has plans for you so number seven guys this is how i had how, how to um Fight back against saying how to fight back against these demonic attacks, how to fight back against the things that are, you know, from darkness that's coming to destroy us, okay, is destroying saying with the word of God, okay? How does how did Jesus defeat the devil? The word of God, the sword of the spirit, knowing your word, knowing the word of God, reading the Bible, okay? Also, the armor of God, it's not just the sword of the spirit, the helmet of salvation, I was saying earlier, which guards you, guards your mind against demonic thoughts or any type of, you know, things that's going to feed your mind with air, with weakness, okay? The breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the boots of peace, and the belt of truth. I'm going to make a video on that, yeah? I'm gonna, I'm, in the future, if you guys haven't already subscribed, I'm going to make a video about the armor of God, maybe on Tuesday, hopefully on Tuesday or sometime next week. Um, so also with prayer, okay? Even the, it talks about Ephesians chapter 6, verse 8. It's uh, always be praying, to, and you know, it links to spiritual warfare, so... You know, praying for deliverance. Maybe there's like a sin that's keeping you in bondage or pray against any of the attacks, okay? God is with you guys. God is with you. Always keep that in mind. Also, resistance. I was speaking about that earlier. The Bible says in James chapter 4, verse 8, resist the devil and he shall flee from you. Draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. Okay, cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double mind. Okay, be humble in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. James chapter 4, okay? And also with faith. Okay, Jesus, if you have faith in Jesus, okay, he overcame the devil. He overcame this world. So if you have faith in Jesus, true faith, and remember, because true faith produces works. So if you have true faith, you're going to overcome the devil. He's nothing, man, because you got Jesus in you, you got the spirit of Christ in you. So yeah, man, let's get us go. Quick summary. Number one is question your faith and your belief in God. Number two is when you give up a sin that's keeping you in bondage. Number three is sexual dreams, dying or attacking your dreams or you feel tempted. Number four is extreme frustration, confusion about purpose, lack of peace, and your strong urge to quit your assignment that God has for you. Number five is temptations to go back to your old bondages. Number six is feeling of overwhelming despair, darkness, and fear. Number seven is, you know, how to destroy the devils with the armor of God, uh, with the word, uh, with the word of God, prayer, resistance, and faith. I love you guys so much. If you haven't already, make sure y'all smash the like button uh, and subscribe to the channel. Share this video on all social media platforms. And if you haven't already, check out this end screen right here. If you guys wish to support me, my link's down below in the description. Beware of fake comments below in the description. Or sorry, below in the comment section. People using fake profiles of me. Don't click on any of the links, guys. So just warn you guys. All right, love you guys so much. I'm out. Peace.